Welcome to the Grateful American series, an interactive multimedia program designed to restore enthusiasm in American history for kids and adults too. Creator of this series is David Bruce Smith, an author and publisher here in Washington, D.C. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host, founder of Incandescent Public Relations and Incandescent TV. We are here today at the magnificent Lincoln Cottage at Soldier's Home with Erin Carlson Mast, the Executive Director. So welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. First, tell us about this amazing property. President Lincoln lived here in the summers, is that right? That's right, President Lincoln came here to live with his family for over a year of his presidency. So that's over a quarter of his time in office he spent living here with his family. President Lincoln's cottage is about three miles north of the White House. Lincoln commuted between the soldier's home and the White House on a regular basis. And so we know that that ride took him about 45 minutes, which is about how long it takes today. While the cottage didn't take them away from the Civil War, it did give them more privacy than they had at the White House. What are some of your favorite things about the cottage? And what do kids love to do when they come here? Kids really love the wide open space out here and the chance to use their imaginations. What I really love about the cottage is that we're not a typical historic house museum. We really focus on Lincoln's big ideas and what he accomplished while he was living here. And kids like to be able to hear about that and think about how that's really a model for their lives. Lincoln is very relevant to us. In many ways, he seems like a very modern president. He had to work very hard to achieve what he did, right. and that's a good model for children today. Do you think the reason for the problems um, kids have in either knowing or caring about American history is because there's something amiss in the educational system, or do they not care? I'm a firm believer that kids are naturally curious, and they crave information, and they want to learn. So if, if children don't have an interest in history, I don't think it's their fault. We train our staff to engage students in history. It's about finding age-appropriate ways to share the stories of what happened here. The stories here are really fascinating, and they're stories a lot of people haven't heard before. Share some of them with us. One of my favorite stories is about um, when Lincoln's here late one evening with Mary Lincoln, and they get a visitor. It's a group of visitors who are coming, including an Englishman named George Borat. The visitors knock on the door late at night. Lincoln's already gone to bed, and they prevail upon the butler to, uh, to have a meeting with Lincoln. Mary Lincoln stays in bed, but the president comes down, and his hair is all messed up, and his feet are in his carpet slippers, and the Englishman is really shocked because, of course, he comes from a society where class and position mean a lot, and you would never expect to see you know, the head monarch in England coming down in their carpet slippers with their hair messed up when they're greeting strangers. And this is exactly what Lincoln did. It makes Lincoln kind of funny, very accessible, just like he was when he was out here. Children are always shocked to find that during Lincoln's time, you could walk up to Lincoln's front door, knock on the door, and have a meeting with the president. That's just not something that we're used to anymore in this country, but it's something that was very much part of Lincoln's world. We know that Lincoln had a great sense of humor. Not all of his jokes convey to us nowadays because, you know, some of the humor is kind of dated. But one of his techniques was to, uh, was to make fun of himself, really. You know, for example, Lincoln was, he was 6'4", he was pretty lanky, and he knew he wasn't the most attractive man in the world. And rather than being self-conscious of that, he used that as part of his humor, you know, to, to lighten the mood with the crowd that he was speaking with. So he was renowned for being able to diffuse situations and charm people that were really not expecting to like Lincoln. So as we end, can you give us three, four, five things that we can talk about around the dinner table about President Lincoln and Lincoln's Cottage? I think one of the great things about Lincoln is that um, he had that daily commute. He used that daily routine to gain new perspective on what was before him. And so I think using that as a lesson for finding those you know, more tedious parts of daily life and turning them into teachable moments, turning them into things that you can use to, to, to learn more about the people who are around you. That's a great thing that Lincoln did while he was out here. Lincoln also loved spending time with his children. There are a lot of great stories of Lincoln out here playing checkers with his son, Tad, or one of my favorite stories is that uh, Tad's pet peacock got caught up in a tree and Lincoln climbed up the tree to rescue the peacock for Tad. That's just it's a really funny I image to think of Lincoln climbing a tree out here. The third thing is that 
these big ideas that Lincoln had didn't come from nowhere. When he had an idea, he wrote down these bits and pieces of ideas on, on, on pieces of paper, and he either stuck them in the brim of his hat or he stashed them in his desk so that later on he could pull all those ideas together and come up with amazing documents like the Emancipation Proclamation. When Lincoln was here, he developed the Emancipation Proclamation in the first summer he was living at the cottage. And we actually believe that it was by virtue of being out here that he had the think space in order to, to develop that document. Well, thank you for being here with us, Erna. Thank you for having us come to this beautiful Lincoln Cottage. This was great, thank you. Yes, great. and we look forward to talking to you again and to having you be part of our Grateful American series. Thank you again, it was a pleasure. That's it for today's episode of the Grateful American series. We look forward to restoring enthusiasm in American history for you and your kids. Be sure to check out our website for more episodes at www.incandescenttv.com.